AARC AACR San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I will now hand the press conference over to our moderator, Dr. Jennifer Ligabel, who is a breast oncologist and assistant professor of medicine at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Dr. Ligabel. Good morning, everyone. I'd also like to extend my welcome to this inaugural press conference of the 2011 uh, San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I'm honored today to introduce our four speakers who will cover topics ranging from the identification of some novel uh, predictive factors for the development of breast cancer to some new testing for patients with ductal carcinoma in situ, evaluation of a new treatment modality for women with breast cancer, and finally, a study looking at prognostic factors for women diagnosed with invasive disease. Our first abstract this morning focuses on breast cancer risk. We've known for many years that obese postmenopausal women are at increased risk of developing breast cancer. However, although this has been shown in dozens of studies, we have very little understanding of the biologic mechanisms that link obesity and breast cancer carcinogenesis. Prior hypotheses really focused on estrogen levels, which we know are higher in obese women. However, more recent work has really focused on insulin and other metabolic hormones as potentially driving the relationship between obesity and breast cancer development. Here today to present their work looking at this topic is Dr. Holkin Olson, professor in the Department of Oncology and Cancer Epidemiology at Lund University. Dr. Olson. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I will, our study uh, is, uh, has been undertaken in the southern part of Sweden and is uh, population based. We have used all the cancer cases and uh, population matched controls. Um, the design was that we used the cancer cases which were reported to the cancer registry between 2005 to 2007. That is 2,724 patients. And then we matched controls on their geography and age uh, from the general population to uh, 20,542. We were also able to link the identity of the individuals to the outpatient and inpatient registers of all hospitals in south southern Sweden uh, from uh, 1999 and onwards. And also using the, the National Pharmacy Prescription Registry, we could get all the, recipe, uh, the, the prescription who has been uh, issued for the patient between 2005 and 2007. And we have a complete follow-up through the 10-digit unique person number which the patients under uh, controls have. Our results show that uh, I think we just stick to the, the B line here, which is the multivariate analysis, shows that diabetes is associated with breast cancer, uh, in, increased almost 40% in the patients. Obesity uh, was lower, not significantly lower, but when we look at the postmenopausal women above 60 years of age, we see an increased risk as been stated before in other investigations. Surprisingly, abnormal blood lipids, uh, that is mainly referring to high cholesterol levels and treatment for that, was significantly lower uh, in, in um, the breast cancer patient compared with the controls. There was also a, uh, some a relationship with the time that the diabetes was diagnosed within four years of diagnosis of the breast cancer. And we could not see a strong relationship if the diabetes was diagnosed 10 years before and so on. Uh, we also looked at medications, and um, uh, it has previously been a, a number of studies try associating glargine use, uh, that's a long-acting insulin analog, with cancer development and especially breast cancer development. Unfortunately, our material and follow-up does not allow us to look at specific cancer types but we looked at the overall cancer incidence in glargine users among the cases compared with the controls and then could see oh, more than a double risk of getting cancer uh, who, among the individuals using glargine. Metformin use, you also have heard about that it's an oral drug that is used uh, for type 2 diabetes to, uh, well, uh, to, to better uh, control the, the glucose and the insulin situation. And we could see there, like other uh, people had reported, a uh, reduction in risk uh, with 8%, which was not significant, but it was uh, still pointing in the same direction which studies had shown before. 
So the main findings, if we try to summarize here, is that, it, that there is a link between diabetes and breast cancer even after adjusting for obesity and abnormal blood lipids, especially seen within four years of the cancer diagnosis. Obesity after age 60 is associated with breast cancer. Fewer breast cancer patients compared with the general population are diagnosed with high abnormal blood lipids, especially if it's in, within four years of diagnosis. The long-acting insulin analog glargin is associated with an increased risk of overall cancer, while metformin use renders a lower cancer risk. Uh, we do have shortcomings also in registry studies. Uh, it's a short time span we've been looking at this, and we would like to extend the follow-up time here to um, increase the number of cases and controls. Uh, and as I said, we have a low power yet to study individual cancer types in relation to different medications, uh, which we now can extend in, uh, in the coming years. Uh, look, and we also need to know who reports the diagnosis of obesity in the in and out patient uh, register. Well, it needs to be rather extreme overweight, which we have in these uh, uh, registries. Uh, I would call it obesity rather than overweight. Uh, and we have not studied the role of anti-lipid therapy, for instance, the role of statins and so forth, which we need to do later on. Our research group uh, consists of myself, which have been involved in 30 years almost in breast cancer research, and now also melanoma research on genetics and epidemiological risk factors. Bo Atner, who is a PhD student, Mona Landin Olsen, who is professor in endocrinology and diabetes, to Littmann, uh, associate professor in epidemiology, and Dennis Noreen, a statistician. I'd like to show a final picture, though, because our project is much bigger than only breast cancer. And we are able to confirm in the study which, uh, which we are doing that there are four or five diagnoses which are associated with diabetes. And that is colon cancer, liver cancer, pancreas cancer, and breast cancer, and maybe urinary tract uh, bladder <coughs> cancer also. In obesity, it's already been known that endometrial ca uh, cancer is increased, and kidney cancer is also increased in the risk of uh, women, and colon cancer. And in blood lipid abnormalities, we can only see that breast cancer and ovarian cancer is changed. And for ovarian cancer, there are significantly more women who have abnormal lipids, that is, probably high cholesterol levels then. So that's what I'd like to say.